What's going on, y'all? Back again with another Quarantine Conversations. I got a really, really special guy here today. Took some time out to, to join, the, join the conversation, man, and, and, and chop it up with me. Uh, very special guy, man, from Chicago, well-known around the world now. He's well-known around the world now for his, just his, his in, intensity and tenacity of just being a, a really good hooper, man, like a really good hooper. He's having a great career overseas. And uh, he's doing some phenomenal things, not only here in the States, but uh, in Australia, in, in, in the overseas market with, you know, just uh, giving back. And uh, I'd like to welcome a really good guy, Jerome Randall, handled by Randall. What's good, baby? What's up, big bro? Man, How you doing, man? Just, you know, maintaining, just trying to, you know, keep my head right. And that's really it, bro. That's what's up, man. How, how's the fam? How, how's the wife and, and baby girl? It's good, man. It's, you know, I can spend more time with them now, you know, knowing that, you know, everybody is down and, you know, I'm not playing, nobody's playing basketball right now. So, you know, the time that I feel like I miss by traveling a lot, you know, this is the time to, you know, get that time in with the family and my little girl, you know? No doubt. No doubt, man. No doubt. So how, how, did you, how is she now? She, She's about to be two, May 24th. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Running, running rough. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Ah, hey, I don't know. You all know if you remember this, bro. When we, when you first got to Ukraine and joined the team, I was having my first child that year. You know I me, mean? my my wife and wasn't there, but that was my, I was having my first child that year, bro. So yeah, yeah you left. You left while we was playing to go go back yeah. to the crib. Yeah, you, almost. almost time. Like, <laughs> I remember that like it was yesterday. Like we was playing cards every night. Yeah, I yeah. almost didn't come back, bro. That was a, that was a tough situation, man. That Ukraine, like, I don't even know if you even know when you got there how like how messed up it was, man. Like when you got there, did you know? And I didn't even know this. You remember Ricky? Yeah. All right. The game you first game you played in when you got to our team, he got he. <laughs> I know you like, man. What the hell I got myself to? He about to fight the coach out of the game. You know. Yeah, what I Man, because they cut him. Like, what happened? Like, it was some crazy stuff going on. I didn't know, like, but exactly. I ain't know. But I knew it was something going on with that team. Oh, bro. Our team, like, just the team, like, far as the players, everybody was money. Like, everybody was good, bro. Like, we had a good, like, we had some talented guys, and everybody was cool. That wasn't a problem. It was the management and the GM. Yeah. Crooked, like, crooked, crooked, crooked. So they was about to fire that coach. He was about, he knew he was about to get fired. So like, I don't know if that was like a cup game or we trying to qualify for the cup game, but he was basically trying to lose the game for it. Like he was basically like, I, I ain't, I, for what? Why, why went for what? Y'all about to fire me. So that's why Ricky was about to fight him because Ricky knew his intentions was like, I don't care if y'all win or lose to this game. Like, right. so that's, that's what, they, when I got in the locker room, I'm like, man, what's going on? Like everybody just sitting there about to let them square up. I'm like, no, man, this cannot go down like this. It's crazy you said that because when we made it to the finals, you remember my knee was messed up. And you told me, you was like, little bro, Shut sit down. down, chill. Shut it down. The GM messed me over. He told me to go home. And then they wrote that, wrote that story about me in the paper saying that I just ended up leaving. That's so, man, I, I, bad, I, you couldn't pay me, you couldn't pay me no amount of money to go back to, to that. It, to that, to Ukraine, to that city, bro. It, it that was the worst. That was one of my worst stops. Now that was my, I absolutely worst stop, bro. Yeah, it was bad. I think we was, we was, we kept each other sane because we was always together at night playing cards, taking uh dude money. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, no. If it wasn't for y'all, like I said, if it wasn't for Ricky and his family, uh, yeah. Joe Crispin and his family, then you, Othella, and uh, Rado. Like, if it wasn't for that, bro, I would nah, I would have been nah, I would have been snapped on them people. I would have been got kicked out of that situation, man. Yeah, it was crazy. I would have been got that. Long time ago, too, bro. Man, what? But just think about that, bro. Like, that was, what was that? That was like the start of your career. It was a start, yeah. That was, just, yeah, that was the start of your career, bro. Was that deep. was right after I left with Dallas Mavericks. So you, you, you a decade in. Yeah. 10, 10 or 11, how many years? 10, you 10 going on 11. You a, de you a decade in, bro. You you official. You a bet. Yeah, I know, bro. <laughs> you a, you old, old head. <laughs> <laughs> you a old head. Oh, old Roman Rome. Rome. Man, they fly by so fast, too, man. You look up and 10, 10 11 years gone already. Man, Romy Rome, a bet. Like a real bet, bro. Hey, yeah. congratulations, though, man. Like, like I said, you done, you done been through some stuff, man. Like a lot of people. 
and, and you shared your story. Uh, yeah. So enough people know, but a lot of people don't know, man, just how good you really are, the circumstances that you don't fought against. And, you know, and you, and you persevered, man. Like I said, you might not reach the highest plateau that you want, like you feel like you should be at. But, like, I think just around the world, around the world, people who know Jerome Randall, players, hoopers, you know, coaches, teams, like they like this kid can, this this young man really can play. Like he he could be at the next level. Just you know, and you old enough now to understand it. Like it's all about situational and, and the right fit, man. Like a lot of talented guys don't make it. And you're from Chicago, so you've seen plenty of guys who who probably should have been in the league and yeah. and just didn't get that fair shake. Yeah, but you know, it, it took some time, bro. Like I mean, you have you. I was with you. You was my vet. You looked out for me. It took time for me to get to that mindset. You know what I'm saying? I was super bitter. Like, I was bitter, man, for years because just thinking, like, I supposed to be there and not really knowing what part I played in it. You know what I'm saying? But and when it's in your head and you're just thinking, like, damn, like, you know, all these people done done these things and, you know, put me in these bad situations and, and I'm mad at them. You know, I just had to come to grips. Like, I need to grow up and figure out a way to still maintain, you know, the fact that, I'm blessed enough to play basketball. And I didn't understand that early. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, if anything, I was being selfish. You know what I'm saying? Just not really appreciating the fact that I still was able to pick up a basketball and play. You know what I'm saying? And travel the world. So it took some time for me to get to that point. You know, but am I going to say it was tough? It was difficult, bro. Like, it, you know, it took me to a really dark place, you know, because I knew what happened and, you know, people that you thought was there for you, you know, they had their own intentions and, you know, you got to live with those decisions, man. And it, you know, put me in a bad place, but I'm glad it happened because it made me look at things differently now that I'm older and I can help out, you know, the shorties. All right. So, so I'm going to put it in perspective for people who don't really know who you are. So Jerome Randall went to Cal, Cal Berkeley, graduated. You graduated, right? Yeah. Um, 2010. Yeah. Okay. So graduate four year player graduating 2010 was an All-American, uh, player of the year in the, in the pack. Was it, was it was still the pack 10 then, or was yep, it the pack? Yep. Player of the year, man, player of the year in a, in a very talented uh, 2010 class that year. Like who, John Wall was in that, them type of guys was in that, was in no, that year? it was, uh, man, when I got there, man, it was OJ, it was Isaiah Thomas, Darren Collison, um, Aaron Aflalo was in there. Um, man, all, all the PGs, Westbrook, Drew Holiday. Oh. You naming all pros, like yeah. this man was player of the year in a conference with all these guys he just named: uh, Darren Collison, O.J. Mayo at USC, mm-hmm. Russ Brook, uh, Aaron Fowler. Like all these guys was pros and had and had hell of a careers in the NBA. And this guy was player of the year amongst those guys in college. So that's just a backstory of kind of what he's talking about. Is just you know feeling like he didn't get his fair shake, uh, but. Man, no different than me though, man. Like I was able to make it, but at the same time, my first couple of years in Europe, bro, I was on. I I was ready to let anybody have it because I, I, similar to you, man. I'm like, bro, what? Why am I here? Like, I don't like. I'm. I deserve. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I'm good enough, and I should be. I should still be in the NBA. So it took me a while, man. So by the time we met up, like I had kind of you know matured and went through some stuff on my own. I was like, you know what? All right. This is where I'm at, bro. That I I gotta make it work. Like you said, you know, I'm, I'm still thankful to be making a lot of money playing basketball, even though it's not where I want to be. Like, I'm still able to take care of my family, you know, and, and it's I'm living a good life. So, you know, I got to count my blessings, man, and, you know, make the best of it. Because like you said now, you, you 10 years in, it goes fast, bro. Really fast, bro. <laughs> really fast. fast. And it's crazy because, you know, I had to now take that mindset and focus, you know, on a young dude that probably dealt with something similar to what I was dealing with. You get what I'm saying? And I feel like that was a roller coaster for you. You know what I'm saying? Like you feeling this way and then here I come, a young boy dealing with what I'm dealing with and you helping me through this process because I was I was dealing with that shit coming to y'all. Like you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you was like every day like on me like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, young fella, do your thing. Like encouraging me, letting me know, talking to me. Like you always had that open door policy. I can come rap to you. Like, you know what I'm saying? I ain't know you. Like, you know what I'm saying? I just knew of you and saw you play. But like, you know what I'm saying? You never really know, you know, how people gonna be unless you meet them. So I do appreciate that because you definitely helped out a lot. Like, you know what I'm saying? Cause that was early, like dark, dark stages, you know, for my career though. 
Yeah, man. No, it's all love. Like I said, I had had a conversation with uh with Marie Chapman. I don't know if you know what that is. Yeah. But we was talking about a similar situation. And I'm like, man, I've always been that way. You know, even even early on, I was like, man, if you my teammate, man, I got your back. I don't I want to see you win because at the at the same time in Europe is definitely different because the more team success you have, the more uh, the more individual spotlight you can get just by being on a good team. Everybody, you know, everybody gonna get their fair share. Everybody gonna get the chance to get paid, especially when your team is really good. So yeah. I've always been on that. Like, all right, man, I got this young fella coming in. Remember, I don't even know if you remember this. I was like, when that first game you came, mm-hmm. mind you, I was already off the like. I was my mind was already like, man, forget this season. I was already, but the first game you came, I was like, bro, do your like shoot all the balls if you want to. You remember you that? I like that. I don't to. care. Like. Yeah. I was like, bro, I, we shoot all the balls, bro. I, I, I'm not tripping on that. Yeah. But, yeah, I've always been like that, bro. I always understood, like, man, you got to help the guys coming up. You know what I'm saying? Especially me, my transition was, was difficult, man. I went from playing off the ball my whole career. Then I get to the league, and that's the knock on me. Like, oh, he's not a point guard. Well, like, no, no duh. Like, I never played point in my life, but I didn't have anybody there to really mold me and shape me and tell me how to do, you know what I'm saying, how to become a point guard. I didn't have that. I had, like, my guy Sam Vassell took care of me, but at the same time, he was still playing and finishing her, his career. But I didn't have nobody really – I had to learn on the fly. When I got to Europe, I learned on the fly how to be a point guard and how to – you know what I'm saying? How to lead a, te- lead a team in, in that way. Like, I've always been a leader from – off the ball standpoint, but I had to learn how to be a point guard and lead the team as the – as the as the real act, as the point guard, you know, as the playmaker. So Difficult. Difficult job. Man. Mind you, mind you, trying to do this at the professional level is difficult, bro. You, like, you got guys, egos, and, you know what I'm saying, looking at me like, uh, you know, like, whatever the case may be. You know how it is. Like, everybody not everybody not welcoming, in, yeah. you know what I'm saying, in, on your overseas team. So, yeah. no, nah, man, I, I appreciate you. Uh, I just, man, just the guy that you were, just being able to soak that up and, you know, and, and willing to listen. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I can only give you the information. It's up to you to take it and use it how you want it. You know how you want to use it, and and you was you was humble about it, and you was open. You know what I'm saying? You, you, like you said, you didn't have to. We didn't know each other. You was open about like, look, man, I'm going through this. Like, bro, like, and I was, you know, I was able to share whatever I whatever I share with you, just to try to help you, try to help you get through it. Cause I, I understood it, bro. It's it's tough. It's tough when you. It's yeah. tough, especially just knowing, like I said, knowing your situation. You didn't you didn't get a chance to taste it. I got a chance to taste it. Yeah. And then seeing your game, your work ethic, like people don't, don't, a lot of people don't even know, like, man, you one of the hardest workers I've seen, like yeah. at any, you know, at any level for any team, like, like you want you want the hardest workers do, man. And one, to being your size, you've always probably had that, you know, you've had to have that, had to have that, you know what I'm saying, that mentality and that extra, like, you know, like, I'm small, you know, people going to look me over because I'm small. So I got to go a little extra harder. Yeah, so can you just talk a little bit about that because you're going through something now, man. You you like you say you're in your tenth year. You just had an ACL injury. Uh, talk about you know just that process. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. I always basically had a chip on my shoulder. I mean, Norm, you know where I come from, South Side of Chicago. You know, uh, mom. You know, five kids, single mother. You know, so I just didn't really want to be a statistic. Like I knew what I wanted. I seen like friends, you know, getting killed. I seen cousins going to jail and I'm just like, man, I can't, you know, so I tried like getting in trouble early. It just got to a point. I'm like, man, I need to figure out what I want to do. Like, so I, I made a decision like, yo, this is, you know, my mom supported that. Like she made sure that she wasn't, she wasn't letting me give up. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it just got to a point where I focus on what I wanted. You know what I'm saying? Like people telling you, like, you can't do something. That's the, you know, the normal story for, a young five nine, you know, guard. You hear everybody saying you can't do something. So I just took that shit as motivation, bro. You know what I'm saying? And now, you know, 10 years, 10, 11 years in, being a pro, you know, I, I can just say I'm blessed, man. Like, you know, all it's a guy, a lot of guys from Chicago with so much talent. It's just like they ain't even playing no more. Just not having that mental strength to to deal with all the shit that goes on in Europe. I mean, you know. You know, coming from the NBA and then going to Europe, man, that's a big transition. But for me, South Side of Chicago, like going, you know, out of the country by yourself, language barrier, and I struggle, bro. Like nobody was with me, man. <laughs> Here you go, I'm spoiled kid. Like as, as far as like my mom, like spoiling me with food and stuff. I go over there, nigga. I lost 18 pounds in two weeks. Hey, yeah, that's 
that's tough. Uh, your first stop being that city is is because it's yeah. tough, bro. Because that wasn't the type of city like the food and the, just it was bad, bro. And I was bro. Options, yeah. We ate at the same when we went out. We ate at the same restaurant. Same <laughs> <laughs> every night, bro. That's all we had, though. Like Man. that's all we had. Man, your wife sending you packages. <laughs> I'm calling my mom. I need some TV dinners. I need something. <laughs> Send me something, man. Like it got it was bad, bro. Like I had to figure it out, man. That, that was my bitter stages. But you know, uh it's going to 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 Australia. Like, you know, I just start from um getting that passport, the Ukrainian passport, you know, out of nowhere. And um, you know, after Eurobasket, you know, my agent at the time was like, yo, you're you're gonna be able to get any job you want, right? So I'm like, cool, I do good in Eurobasket. I'm sitting at home, bro. He like, no teams want you. I'm looking at this too, like, what? I'm like, come on, bro. Like, so I'm sitting at home, me and my wife sitting at home for like two, three months. I'm stressing. Like, and I knew at some point it was gonna change. So I finally started getting really good offers from Europe. And I get a ninety thousand dollar offer from Australia. And it was probably three times, maybe four times more in Europe. I took the ninety thousand because I need me mentally. I needed a change. I I had to get away. I had to step away, like for my mental. Like I was ready to quit five years ago. I didn't want to play no more. Like I was there. Like at that point, like I was about to hang it up. I couldn't deal with not getting paid. I couldn't deal with going over there and all the bullshit that was, was happening with that, like working hard two times a day, and you gotta wait two, three months for your money, I wasn't feeling that shit. In basketball, basketball just started being boring, like, because it wasn't fun. Like, it was more so of a job other than us playing the game that we love and getting paid for. Like, you have to beg for your money. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I just took that job, I'm like, look, we, we going here. Like, we need, a, we need a change. Man, end up being the best decision of my life. I'm glad you brought that up, bro, because not knowing, like I said, we haven't talked like this in a, you know, in a lot. So yeah. just, I've, I've seen the transition, and the cross, your crossover has been amazing. Yeah. Like, people don't understand, like, when you play in Europe, Europe, Europe is considered, like, the next best thing to be, platform to be in if you're not in the NBA, right? Yeah. So when you go play in China and, like, in other, other places and the South American, like, European people, they don't really respect them leagues, right? Yeah. The Australian league is, is I think, is probably – up there now with Europe because of the quality of play, the players that y'all, the, the Australian league is getting out, they're getting former NBA guy, you know, and, and it's a lot strong. It's becoming a much stronger league with the, you know, the young guys taking their time, the high school guys going over there now straight from high school to, you know, uh, so man, like not knowing, I'm thinking like, all right, he went to Australia. He got a, you know, he got, he got a heads up. He got a heads up about, look, this, this, this what about to happen. This to change. And, uh, you know, you need, you need to go, you need to probably make the jump to Australia and finish your career there, not knowing that you took a chance on yourself because you were just tired of tired of the BS in Europe, which is a lot. Like that's I was chasing money. Like early on, I was chasing money. And then it just got to a point where the money had me unhappy. Right. Right. So I just like, okay, I can't chase money no more. I need to chase my happiness. Like I just need a change, bro. And like five years ago, I'm looking at my wife, looking at the money, like, yeah, money good. But I know if I go there, I'm gonna be unhappy for 10 months. I know that shit. So let's take a chance. She like bet, let's take a chance. And we took that money, ended up being the best thing. I started within two months of being over there. I started JHR. Like you got 8,000 people in the stands, probably 2,000 with JHR on walking around. You go around the mall, you know what I'm saying? You got people wearing my JHR stuff. You get what I'm saying? It's just like, I just started to be more of a basketball player. You get what I'm saying? Like, I was more than that. Like, I didn't, you know, I, we weren't going in the house like we are in, in, in Europe. At the practice, you sitting there watching your little fire stick of movies or whatever. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I was able to enjoy life. You get what I'm saying? And I never, I, I didn't turn back after that. You know what I'm saying? It ended up just being the best thing. And, you know, that my, you know, my brand is, is growing. So now I'm just trying to learn the business side of, of everything. Like no one taught me that growing up. You get what I'm saying? So it was just more authentic, you know, just getting your clientele and getting people. So now I'm more trying to learn the business side, like trying to surround myself, you know, around people that 
understand business and you know how to put certain things together. Why am I doing this? It's a reason why I want to do it. You know what I'm saying? Do I want to do it after I finish playing basketball? You know, so those are the type of things that I'm focused on right now, just trying to see, you know, what area I'm gonna, you know, lean towards once I, you know, hang up the shoes. So and I feel like I have a pretty good idea of what I want to do. And that's help help kids and train and just be a part of the game. So yeah, so man, so yeah, talk a little bit more about how you actually how that actually came about. Like your whole like you got you was doing you doing clinics in Australia camps like you had a whole like you got a whole bunch going on like which is not normal for a guy overseas while he's playing like you know what I'm saying you had a you got a whole bunch of good like it's not like not just anything going on. you got a whole bunch of really good stuff going on during your season why are you over there in Australia let's talk about kind of how that came about it happened like crazy like it didn't even supposed to happen uh, after the games they do this thing where you walk around the court and you sign autographs after the game so you know, I, I once I got there, like I, I won over the crowd, I won over the city, like the first game. So, you know, they they weren't even getting half the stands filled. So, two, three games, they started selling out. So, kids and everybody start coming out, and I see kids crying, literally crying because they couldn't get an autograph. They put a time up. So, I'm like, let me go and create a fan page. You know, thousands of people out of nowhere within two days, you know, you know, join my, you know, Facebook fan page. So I say, yo, I'm going to be down at the beach because I live on the beach um, around two o'clock on a Sunday. You know, if you guys get autographs, you come down. Man, like 200 fucking people showed up. <laughs> Listen to me, like 200 people showed up. You by so yourself? We down on the beach, like... I had to call up people. They brought a rim down, like, the, the team. Like, they were so supportive. I'm like, this can't be basketball. Like, I'm like, this can't be for real. Right. And I'm just down there just dribbling, just playing around and just having a good time. And I'm like, man, and just thinking about the lady when I was a kid, you know, she helped me. Like, my first basketball coach was a woman. She's, like, 70 right now, and she's the toughest coach I ever had in my life. So she was the one who inspired me to, you know, help because of what she did for me, you know, when I was a kid living in the church and all that shit. You get what I'm saying? So I'm like, you know what? Well, let me start training kids. They parents just start asking, "Do you train?" I'm like, "Yeah, I can." Man, I did a camp. It was 115 kids showed up. First camp. First camp. 115 kids. So I'm like, "Yo, I gotta keep this shit going." That 90,000 I made, I just doubled that shit just based off of. Camp, so I'm like, man, what, what's going on? So my wife, like, my wife started getting in the community. We started doing things, and man, that shit just blew up, bro. I didn't, I didn't even expect it to be like that. I just expect to go out and play basketball, but you know, you know, you know how life is, man. Yeah, man. That just goes to show. I mean, that's that's like you said, you took a chance on yourself, but that's where you, that's where you were supposed to be. Yeah. Right? I yeah. mean, that's, God had already had that set up for you, man. He just needed you to to put it in your mind, like, all right, I got it. I got to change up here, right? Cause it's, I'm not happy. I'm not. I'm not happy inside here. So I changed my mindset, and I gotta go out here, and you know, and make life better for myself. And then, like you said, you grew up like, all right, I got an opportunity to help, help, help somebody. Yeah. Yeah. You know, somebody helped me, so all right, this is this is what I'm gonna try. And yeah. but yeah. you made the comment like about the NBA, and you was like, you know, I was pissed because this is where I'm supposed to be. But I start asking myself the question like. Am I supposed to be there? Right, 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 right. And the reason why I'm saying it now because of what you just said. Like, that's why I'm supposed to be. So, you know, God puts you in these situations. So that's what I started saying to myself. Like, would I be doing what I'm doing now had I made the NBA? Probably right. not. Right. You know, how valuable would I have been to the youth or the community if I was in the NBA? Like, so I start thinking like that. And once I start thinking like that, I never even thought about the NBA again. But in my mind, I know for sure that my talent is NBA talent. But I'm not bitter about it no more. I'm not upset about it no more. I'm very excited that my life is what it is right now and that I'm making a change no matter what. Man, that's, and that's good to hear, man. Like I said, that's just a part of growth, man. Growth and maturity. Like, you're older now. You understand stuff differently now. You got your – you got a – family and, and, and wife of your own. So, of course, man, over time, man, you've had a chance to heal and grow and, and see and experience things that's, that's done helped you 
matured throughout the years. So, man, so salute to you on that, man. Like, it's, like I said, it's tough, man. It's like people, people don't understand how tough it is to play in Europe. They just think that, you know, they just think that a lot of guys go over there and, and, and making a good money and, you know, coming back looking like they living well or whatever the case may be. But them nine, ten months, man, can be some of the worst nine, ten months of your life, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, you wasn't happy at all. Like it's a lot of it's a lot of players, bro, going over there and making a good living, but probably miserable. Like man, like it feel like a and and I don't want to use this lightly, but it feel like a prison bid sometimes, bro. Exactly what it is. That's what I said. I'm, I'm about to go do this bid. Man, I'll be it, back. <laughs> it, like and like I said, I don't, don't want to put that lightly because you know people in prison like this. But it feel like sometimes when certain situations, man, it feel like like I'm doing a bid, man, because. They don't understand, like the philosophy over there is different. So they, you got teams and your coaches and GMs, they checking on you, trying to yeah. tell you you can't do this and that in the third, and you got to be in your apartment by this. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm an adult. I'm a grown man. I'm Nobody an adult. Tell me I can't go get yeah. no food at 10 o'clock at night. Like, what? Yeah, like, so, so yeah, that's crazy, man. But like I said, it's good, man. I, like, I'm happy and proud of you, bro, to see you doing what you're doing. Like I said, you've made a hell of a cross. A, a crossover from playing in Europe. Now you're doing the Australia thing. The Australia thing is is becoming a, a bigger and more popular league, and and it's becoming and it's respected. It's not becoming. It's it's a well respected league, and there's a lot of good players over there, man. Like you said, you got your JHR handed by Randall. You, your brand, everything is is blowing up, man. You, you know you 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 live out on the West Coast now. Yeah. Talk, how, how did that happen? Let's let's talk about how did that, my, how did that happen? <laughs> always, I mean, I always love the West Coast. Okay. You know, I'm in Chicago right now, but I always love the West Coast from now. You went to Cal. You went to Cal. Yeah. So. You know, but uh, as far as like LA or I'm in Irvine, you know, my agent, at, you know, my agent I have right now, he was out there. So he lived out there and he was like, man, just come out here for the summer and train. I'm like, cool. Chicago went down as far as like everybody started leaving Chicago. Bron, all of them used to come to Chicago and train and work out. Nobody, nobody, everybody stopped coming. So in LA now. In LA. You know what I'm so I'm like, man, let me get up out of here. I go out there for the summer. Me and my wife loved it, bro. Like, met my guy, J-Law. And, you know, it was just, you know, he started teaching me, you know, how to train. And so I just start, you know, being surrounded by people to help me, you know what I'm saying, strengthen, you know, the things that I wanted to do. Like, so I'm right. like, damn, like, everything, like, falling in place. So I, I kind of knew, like, I, what I was leaning towards or what God was putting in place for me to, you know what I'm saying, to do so. I just listened to the signs, bro, and I just, you know, I loved it. I love it. And um, you know, it's a good place to raise raise my my daughter. So I'm cool with that. Man, that's yeah, that's that's what's up, man. Like I, I don't I used to tell people, man, I don't know how people when I was out in LA, people be like, man, I don't really like LA. I'm like, bro, something wrong with you. If you if you don't like if you don't if you ever really been in Los Angeles and you don't like LA, like something something's not right with you because it's not nothing to not like. Like yeah. waking up to the sunshine every day is nice. Yeah. Like it really never rains and something like you know what I'm saying. Like it's nice all the time. How can you not be in a good mood and have positivity? You know what I'm saying. Like being in LA, like it's it's tough. It's tough man. for people to you know. But shit, I love it. I mean, I'm gonna keep enjoying it as long as I'm here, man. Just you know dealing with the. ACL injury, just trying to keep my, my mind right, man. So, yeah, man, before we get off here, talk a little bit about that, man. You just suffered, tore your ACL this past season. Cut your season. Well, season's going to get – but cut the season short for you prematurely. Talk a bit about how that's been for you, man, just being older, dealing with that, fighting through that, the coronavirus, kind of, you know, trying to fight, you know, figure out – has it been hard trying to figure out, you know, initially? I know you got your routine now, but initially, like, when it's first – you got back to the states and the coronavirus hit. Like, was that difficult trying to trying to continue your therapy? Well, the the most difficult thing is when it happened. I didn't know what to expect. Like, I've never been injured. Like, you know, that time when I got when I was injured with y'all, like I didn't have surgery. You get what I'm saying? Like, Look. two two months after that, I was doing therapy. Never had surgery, and I played you know summer league for the Clippers. So I never had a major injury to keep me out. So when it happened, I'm like. Like, damn, this shit is over with. Like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to come back. Those are the thoughts that was coming through my mind. And it's crazy that it happened, bro, because Australia was a bad year. Like, it was so much stuff going on with the, you know, with the team that I was on and the coach. 
it, it was probably one of the worst mental years I ever had in my life. Like, it was that bad. And that's this me going back to the first team that I was on, you know, you know, uh, right. when I got to Australia. And right. after I won MVP, you know, the coach basically just was hating on me and dogged me. It's a brother, wow. you know, from, from, from the States. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he saw, like, what we was just talking about, bro. Like, he saw how big I was getting in that city. You know, for me to win MVP and all that, like, I don't come back the next year, like, you know, all this negative in line. People said I was asked for all this money. It wasn't true. So, to make a long story short, it got real bad this year. Like, you get what I'm saying? So, there was a lot of things happening at the end of the year, and then I get hurt. So, I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, damn, did I do something wrong? Like, is God punishing me because... Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know what the hell to expect right now. Like, you know, I thought I was doing the right thing. I went there with a different type of mindset. Then I get injured. And, man, how I got injured was so damn – it was crazy. But I slipped on a damn decal sticker. It was – it was, man, I'm like – I'm hey, like – it's, oh. it's not funny, but that's Europe, bro. You I know. Like, Europe. I know you ain't laughing because I'm just saying, like, out of all the things, like <laughs> – I slip on a fucking decal sticker. Man. You're a four, you though. Them decal stickers would be everywhere. Listen, to, I was so hot. I'm like, it's over. I'm like, this shit is over with. And uh, the most difficult thing is, in my mind, after that, I'm like, no, nah, I ain't. No, nah, I ain't tell my ACL. I, I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm fucking little shit here and there. I'll be straight. Go to the doctor. They say you tore your ACL. The doctor was like, the injury that you had, have you broke your leg like for sure and pete this after the injury they take me in the back they like do this do that this motherfucker went to the back and get a long ass needle bro and he was about to shoot me in the knee and tell me go back out there and play i'm like yo what's that behind your back he say uh no no it's, it's okay i say no the fuck it ain't okay like you're not about to <laughs> i say who you think you playing with bro yo um, Yo, me and you and my oh. man goes in the back and get a needle this long. I just hyperextended my knee bad. This man, like you go do this, he's like, oh, strong. This man say, no, it's okay, it's okay. I say, no, the fuck, it ain't okay. <laughs> I say, I say, nigga, you is not about to stick me with Yo. that. I say, man, you got me messed up, bro. Like I can't, nah, I can't go, bro. Man, it's, it was crazy. So once the doctor said ACL, I broke down. I broke down. And I ain't going to lie, I broke down. And um, I had to stay in the hospital for a little while. And um, I had to gather my thoughts. Like, I had to try to switch switch my mindset up because if I stayed in that funk, then I wouldn't be able to make the progress that I'm making right now. So I just kind of reversed it and was like, people going to be, I'm going to be way more dangerous. Like, it's it, it, it's scarier that I got the time to, like, really take time and just rest and and work on my body and shit. So I'm I'm taking that mindset, like, the motherfucker's, like, really in trouble because I can actually sit down and think. Like, you know what I'm saying? I never, in 10, 11 years, I've been just on the move, just playing and shit like that. Then this coronavirus happened. So I'm like, Thank God, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not thank God it's the people dying, like this shit fucked up. But for me, it's like, it's cool. Ain't nobody playing basketball anyway. You get what I'm saying? Right, right, and right. In Chicago, I got close friends with private practices. So I'm good. You know, I go in there by myself. They looking out for me. So, you know, I've been getting the right treatment. You know, I'm probably a month ahead of the game right now. Like I'm doing shit that I shouldn't even be doing at two months. So. You know, just I think the mindset is what actually got me to this point right now and not really taking that as if, you know, I ain't going to be able to come back stronger. The only thing I worry about, honestly, that bothers me is how people perceive, like how how they look at me now. Like he's getting older, like he ain't going to be the same. Am I going to give him another opportunity? That's the only thing I worry about. Other than getting back healthy, I ain't worried about that shit. Well, I mean, you know what I'm saying? You can't control that because that's going to happen because it's Europe. And I don't know, for whatever reason, they think once you hit 30, like, your game supposed to go like this, like them Europeans. Like, nah, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we way different. Like, I still, you know what I'm saying? Like, even for me, right, I still was playing 
at a pretty high level, but like, like it was like every everybody that was kind of interested was like, oh well, he's a year older, and like, bro, I just had a hell of a season the year before. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, what what is the year older? Like, until I'm not producing, then that's when you should be worried. But if I'm still producing, then you shouldn't be worried about how old I am. Uh, yeah. So, but I, my point is that to you, man. Like, just you only control what you can control. You know what I'm saying? Like, people gonna think what they think, and you deal with this your whole life. You know, they gonna say what they say. You know. But, you know, you know, once you get that opportunity, you're going to be ready and, and do what you got to do like you've always done. I can't but, wait. Man, yeah. But, yeah, I, I, I'm glad. I, at, you know what's crazy, Rome? I, I, I saw on your profile at Wikipedia, bro. I'm kind of mad about it. Your, your, only chi- well, your only chip in Europe was against me, bro? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yo, hey, man. Hey, yo, I got to tell you, I'm like, you don't understand. When I found out you was over there, right? This true story. I was nervous as shit. You hear me? Because you used to abuse me in practice, dog. So I'm like, so once I found out we playing them playing you in the finals, I'm like, I tell my wife, I'm like, babe, D Ewan is a fucking B. <laughs> so she like, this true nigga, she tell me the story. I'm like, I ain't never really been nervous like to play, especially like that was like some big time basketball, like. That was some big time shit. And y'all was hooping. Y'all just beat the team we supposed to play in the finals. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? And you hooping. So I'm like, I'm like, I gotta get my shit right. Cause he gonna fucking come in the <laughs> So I just started thinking about <laughs> how you used to abuse me when I was a shorty. I'm like, I can't let this motherfucker abuse me like that. So bro. I was so locked in, bro. Like I wanted that so bad, bro. I want hey, to so yeah, you was on hey you was on point too. My whole thing was like, man, how I'm gonna keep up with this little nigga. I'm like, this I gotta keep up with wrong. And I know I'm like, I'm the only person on my team who can do it. I'm like, bro, I'm too old for this, man. I ain't got, I ain't got time. And then y'all had other people. I'm like, bro, I ain't got time to be worried about Rome. And then somebody else got I'm like, bro, we we just ain't I mean, y'all was a better team. Y'all had way more talent. Y'all was too y'all was too big for us. And like I said, we had got worn out. We didn't really have a chance. We had got worn out in the semifinals going five yeah. games. But so what helped me is the coach was like, push that shit. Like, I want you to be you. Like, so he allowed me to just play. Like, actually, the, my teammates went to him. True story before the uh, playoffs was like, if you want to win the finals, you need to let Jerome play his game. Because throughout the year, he wasn't letting me play. And that was the best experience I ever had in Europe. That they, man, they accepted me like, here you go. And you know everybody that was on that team. Them niggas was millionaires. They was all paid, bro, and no egos. Not a one, bro. How, how was it playing for Yesha Cabbages, man? How, how is he as a coach? He a good coach, but he he crazy. Like, <laughs> but, no, he like nuts. But he's like very easy to play for because you know exactly what you need to do. Or what You know what he wants you to do in the game. It was just like... I don't know, the game just came so easy. Like, his structure and how he put the game together, man, that was the easiest I've ever played basketball, bro. Yeah, I mean, he was I mean, he was and is a legend, especially in Europe. Like, I played against him when he was little. He was kind of like kind of like when you played against me, he was kind of older when I played against him in Europe. But I, I mean, he was in the league when I was in the league also. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, like, I always had respect for his game. Like, he, he definitely wanted to, like, he was cold-blooded during his prime years, man. He was cold-blooded, so. Yeah. Like, that's, Interesting to see that you know him him becoming the coach and you saying that you know he he know his stuff and and he made the game easy for you man. Yeah, bro. But wrong, bro. It's good hearing from you, man. I know you got some stuff to do. I appreciate you taking time out to chop it up with me, man. Man, it's always a pleasure, man. Good to holler at you, man. Talk to you, bro. For sure, man. God speed to you on, on your recovery, man. Continue to get better, man. And uh, look forward to seeing what else you got coming for the rest of your career, bro. I appreciate that, bro. All right, man. Yeah. Take care, bro. You too.